Well, good morning, everybody. It's Leanne Greff with today's video. Every Tuesday, 11 a.m., I am live on my business Facebook page, that Flowerbugs Ink Spot, if you're wondering what the page is on Facebook. Um, yeah, 11 o'clock Central Time, I do a free class, and usually two or three projects, and I like to show techniques and fun folds, and today I have both. Um, so that's kind of my jam, I guess you'd say. All right, so let me know you're here. Let me get my laptop synced up so I can welcome people, see who's watching. Okay, I'm live. Okay, no comments yet. I do wanna say that next week I will not have a live video. I will be on the Stampin' Up! incentive trip to Norway. So we're going to start off in um, the UK, in uh, London, for a couple days, and then we leave um, Sunday morning on the a Royal Caribbean ship. So we'll be gone for seven days, um, looking at all the beautiful Norway fjords and things. So looking forward to relaxing, seeing my demonstrator friends, and um, just hanging out and seeing the beautiful scenery. So so next week there will not be a live video. Remind me to say that at the end of the, the video today too for people that join later. Okay, so last week the prizes for commenting and sharing. For commenting was a set of the resin stars in four different colors. For sharing, uh, four different cards. Quite a, Three of them are fun fold cards. So the winners are Jennifer June and Mary Deal. So Mary won the cards and Jennifer won the resin stars. So congratulations, gals. I appreciate you sharing my video and commenting, letting me know you're watching and what you're, what you love, what you love. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I think I have another frog in my throat. I am feeling fine, just so you know. <laughs> There's no illness happening at all. So, and every now and then, since I had my cold a few weeks ago, I still get a frog. Okay, so the prizes this time are a set of memories and more cards for sharing. Now this, oh, I love these, honestly. Um, they are, they were in the spring catalog and I made a set of cards in a kit to go version. And they are just so easy to create with. You get stickers, um, you get the cards, and you can add whatever colors and combos you want to make some projects or use them for scrapbooking. So, or memory keeping, um, journaling, there's all kinds of different options. So, and then for commenting, the uh, set of elegant faceted gems. I love these. This kind of works with any pinky, peachy, goldy color that you're using, and then we've got white and clear. So they're they're great. They're not that high, so they're nice to add. So anyway, that's for commenting and sharing on today's video. So a couple other things, quick housekeeping things. I still have some of these left for online orders, over $55. This is the gift I'm giving while I have while I have some left. I'm getting close, I have I think four left, so um, when they run out, I'll be giving a stack of handmade cards as a gift for orders over $55. So that's, that's what's happening with that. And I did fill up a couple of my designer paper shares. So this is what you get with my designer paper share from the annual catalog. So these are all the beautiful papers in our catalog, I got them, shipped them out a few days ago, I think this weekend. So yeah, there's there's beautiful um, papers in our catalog. So this is a great way to get a share of some that you might not um, be able to afford all of them in full packs. So I, I will, this is the last share I'm going to do. So if you want one, let me know. They are 34, I think, with shipping, but they're actually right here on my shop. So you can go in there and reserve one once they fill. And I have about six spots left on this share. Um, then I order it and wait, when I receive it, I prep it, cut it and send it out to you. 
So um, it takes a good few weeks for that to happen. So just so you know, it's, it's a little bit of a waiting period when you have a, a share going on, depending on the interest, of course. Okay, let's see. I do want to mention those are my host codes. So if you place an order, please use a host code. It's what I, um, the orders accumulate and then I can afford to give away the free items that I do for online orders. So if you can, please use a host code and they're either here in my video or they're on my blog or in my newsletter. So that's where that is. Okay, so let's get to stamping. That was pretty quick, five minutes of business. All right, I'm gonna feature the inked and tiled uh, stamp set. Now I'm not using the punches that go with it today. It just didn't work out on the cards that I'm using. But um, I, I really love this set. It's kind of, it's not distinctive, but it's, I don't know if I want to say distressed maybe, but the greetings are great. I thought really versatile. And then of course it's floral and botanical, which is right up my alley. So that's what we're featuring today. Um, another stamp set I'm going to do on my first card is this one. It's called Layering Leaves. And it's Rachel Tessman's Million Dollar Set which matches the bow punch. I was just thrilled that she used, she did that, matched a, a current punch with something we needed, which was some, some stamps that go with it. So really cool set, and I love her greetings and um, the font on them. So I was thrilled with this one. Okay, so we're gonna get that card, we're gonna do that card first. I have three cards today. The last one is a technique, so I hope you can hang in with me just to, to stay tuned for that one. And this is actually a card we made at my team meeting this weekend. We had a shoebox swap. And so this is the card, and I love, love, love the colors. This is gray granite with some of the new pebble path and petal pink with white. So isn't that different? So honestly, I have to tell you, I haven't used gray granite a lot because I just didn't find much that coordinated with it. I'm just like, well, I don't know what to do with it. And you know, I love color. So it, it kind of baffled me. And you know, I'm not really a gray person, although grays are very in, but it's almost a brown gray. It has a brown tint to it. Now, just so you know, this is called a Z fold. So I'm gonna put that right over here. Those are the, the measurements for this card. Okay, so we're gonna do some stamping. I'm actually gonna get, I don't make a huge mess on my paper here. I'm gonna get out my ink. See if I can give myself some room. Okay, so we're going to stamp this background piece. We're gonna use this leaf set a lot on, on this card. So basically, I'm just going to go around the edge, and you'll see me doing this on another card as well. That's pretty good there. Now on the inside, I did stamp another leaf. It's always nice to um, bring something to the inside of your card. So just a little stamp there. Looks like I'm missing that little leaf. I don't know what I'm doing there on a couple of these. Very strange, I'm gonna try again. I see it's inking, but I don't think I'm pressing. Could be because my block is not quite as large as it probably should be with this. Okay, lastly, we're going to stamp the envelope. I think I'm doing a little bit better job here. And then I flip that open so I can do that. Now there is another, I'm going to just rub that off. There's another stamp in here. This one right here, it's, I don't even know what it is, but it's kind of cool. And it, it's good filler. I don't even think I need it on that piece. Well, maybe I'll do a couple. Because only the outside really shows. Okay. Um, the last thing is, and I hope I have it amongst my pieces <laughs> and I don't I don't see it but I know where one is hold on so I'm just going to show you what I do here <laughs> when I die cut or cut some scraps I usually 
have extras that I do just in case, and I know I put one in here. So let's see if I can find what I need. Isn't that something? I have everything but that greeting. Well, maybe I'll use something else. Just not sure I want a, uh, um, I'll use this one, that'll work. So this is when, I, when I'm when i creating, instead of die cutting, I will just grab this. Actually, you know what? I think this one would be better, smaller. I grab that first when I'm creating because um, it's just easy. It's right there and I love having those excess. I just wanna use the little hello. Such a beautiful font on this card or this um, Rachel set, I use the hello right there. There's a thank you, best wishes, hugs, thinking of you, which we needed a really nice thinking of you. So yeah. Now I did also in her set, she has this little, and I thought, well, the little, what do you call those little dotties? I'm gonna use those. I didn't on my card before, I don't know why. And where else was I going to use that? The envelope. That's what I was going to do. You can never have too much of that, right? Well, maybe you can. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think that's it for stamping. I'm going to put this away. That was gray granite ink. I didn't even use the pebbled path. Could, but they're... There, this is just a lighter version. They're so beautiful together. As you can see, this is the pebbled path. And they just, they're the same color tones. Yeah, I think, um, I think they, they are, they work very well together. Okay, now to put this together, we're going to adhere this first. There's really no rhyme or reason what should be first or not but you know for a z fold which is what i did here it's a standard four and a quarter by 11 and you score in half at five and a half but then you score the half of the five and a half and that is two and three quarters and this designer paper has the great it seems to me i know it has um, pebbled path in it but i feel like it is also a little bit of gray granite in there at least i think it works so this is called Earthen Textures. Let me show you. Um, the Earthen Elegance, I'm sorry, Earthen Elegance. I think it could be Earthen Textures, but this is the one I used right here. So very, very beautiful. I'm gonna use this one on another card today, but it has the, the pretty peacock in it and the new copper and yeah, lots, lots of different colors in there. Okay, so this. I'm purposely going to add this car, uh, layer first. And now this isn't a full four inches by five and a quarter. I wanted a little smaller to layer, you'll see in a minute, to layer this piece right here. Okay, now I want, I purposely want this to have the same layer. Oh, I see my leaf shows a little bit there. So I'm gonna add my adhesive here. Don't get too far out now into the, the card. And then when I'm moving this, I'm going to look at my white edges and make sure that they're correct. Okay, all right. So, oh, I do have one more thing I need. So when, you, when you're when you stamping, and I have a stamp from Rachel's set here. This is her leaf that matches, well, it's upside down, but you'll get the gist. Um, so I'm gonna ink it in gray granite. But one thing I wanna tell you is when you're looking at a punch, make sure you look how it goes in and how it layers. So I wanna be able to reach this, so I'm gonna stamp it at an angle. We'll see if my little scrap piece is long enough for this. Okay. All right, now we'll put it away. This, this card is so full of layer and texture. Oh, let's see, yep, I did okay. So see how prettily that matches? I'm gonna try laying the stamps together so I can punch both at the same time. 
but I don't need that today. I just need this one. So this is one of my favorite punches. If you ever need just some greenery or some leafiness, this is a great one. I use it a ton. If you've gotten any of my kits to go, you'll know that, that I use that a lot. So I textured this with the uh, exposed brick embossing folder, one of my new favorites. I've been using it everywhere. Okay, so this is going to go here. It doesn't really have to be in any particular way, except I want my brick to go horizontally, of course. Okay, now my ribbon. So this is a new ribbon. I'm going to just add a little bit. Oh, it doesn't seem to want to stick to ribbon. Sometimes they don't. All right, I'm just going to do a loop. I'm going to put that in. Yeah, it's folded in so it doesn't show. Okay. Come on, you. Here we go. And I'm just going to... A little bit more here. Okay. So how, and these are from the Timeless Arrangements, one of my favorites. It just layers so beautifully that um, I think I'm going to put the white on top of the Pebbled Path one. And you can move these around so they show um, to, sh to show them where you want them. And then what I do is if I've made a few cards with this before, and this will cover up that. Could have sponged the edges in hindsight. I maybe should have. And then we'll just add a couple dimensionals here. It's really a fun card to put together. And this one, I'm going to have to make that lay flat. I don't like it when my ribbons make these float, if you know what I mean. Make sure that's all straight. And then this little piece, I know why I just wanted to use it. I wanted to add a little something else. It's just going to kind of... Um, looks like I already had that stamped on the other side, didn't I? Just a few little pieces of glue and then sneak that in. Okay, and lastly, oh, let's see, I think I took my, my dots away. Nope, oh, maybe they're right here. Sorry, I've got punches galore here. Okay, this is. What are these rustic metallic adhesive dots? And they're kind of a grayish, I don't know, brown. So I thought that they would work pretty well here. Get my dot to, we're just going to add a few random pieces. And I usually do that in threes. Let me do that. Oh, that's too centered, isn't it? I'll move that over here. Okay, that card is done helicopters going by <laughs> okay so that is my z fold card in petal pink pebble path and gray granite with white i think it's beautiful i just love it oh my dot just came off maybe not sticky maybe it, oh i see it's right over there that's sticky there we go okay all right first card done Okay, next one with inked and tiled. And I showed you this uh, fold before. I'm kind of stuck on it, honestly. Um, hopefully you're not too sick of it because um, <laughs> I'm doing it for club this month as well. But here is my card in Boho Blue, Misty Moonlight with Pebbled Path. I want to show you how I got the different colors on here. See that? So there's uh, stems all on one stamp. Let me see where my stamp is. Right here. So I'm going to show you my tricks on how to make that. But this is a book binding easel fold. So it folds open like a book, and yet it's an easel. So held up by a flower. So a couple different techniques here that I used. 
Okay, and I do have two of them, so we'll use this one. All right, let's get going. Yeah, the book binding fold is super fun. I just, I really enjoy this one. Now we're going to stamp this uh, boho, let's see, yeah, boho blue with the leaf. Make sure that that's cleaned off from before. And we're going to use Versamark. So how many of you remember to use your Versamark as a watermark stamp? So, and you can put this together because they kind of go next to each other if you want to, you don't have to. Um, I always change position when I'm making a background stamp just so it's a little more random. And then I'm just gonna go around the edge because the center gets covered. So it's not necessary to do the center. And there's my Versamark. I'll let that dry before we texture it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's textured with the that my new favorite, the exposed brick. 3D embossing folder. Okay, so we'll set that aside. Now in the inside, I did stamp those pretty leaves again. Move the Versa mark out of here. And this time I'm using Pebble Path, which is what the brown is there. Okay, so I just want something over here where the flower is going to be. Okay, all right, now, how we're going to do these flowers. There, oh, you know what, first, before I move on to that, I'm gonna stamp the greeting. And this time, I decided instead of friend, I decided to do the thank you, hoping it'll fit, we'll see, on the oval punch. I gave myself such a skinny little piece. <laughs> so, one of my, Big time favorites is the double oval punch. I love it. So the only problem is getting it straight. So your greeting is, well, it's very hard to find straight on ovals. Very hard. Quite the challenge, let me tell you. Okay, so that is done. We'll set that aside. We'll set this aside and this aside. Okay. All right, so how I got those flowers to be two-toned is a marker and the ink pad, both. So I could use just the marker, but I'm kind of lazy that way. I basically just want to make it fast. So I made 26 of these for swaps for the advisory board I'm going, uh, we're having a special swap on the cruise. So I inked it in the blue boho, but you can see that the, it got on the stem. So I just use my finger, honestly. Just wipe it off, clean my finger off with my, my chamois, and then I'm gonna get into the marker and then finish. And I could ink most of the rest of this in with the ink pad and finish with the marker, but it's pretty fast. Always, always hold your marker like this when you're coloring stamps. And it has to be a stamp and rate marker. You cannot do this with blends. If you color your stamps with blends, it's permanent. They are permanent ink. So I also want to point out, this is one of our new markers. Now, you can see that the brush tip is normal, like our markers always are. But now, instead of that pointy writing tip, we have a bullet tip. All of our markers are now bullet tips. So um, they, you can buy each set of markers individually. You cannot get them separately, single in singly. You have to buy them in sets of color families. But um, if you have any of our old stamp and write markers and your tip, your writing tip doesn't work very well, these are the bomb. I mean, they they work very very well. The artists that were testing them out love them. Okay, now that I took so long. Um, talking. <laughs> this is probably dry, but that's the secret of using markers and coloring individually is you have to huff. You have to huff on your image to re-moisten that ink. So what I mean by huffing is uh, huffing with your moist breath like you're cleaning your glasses. <sighs> <sighs> mm. 
Don't wait too long after you huff. Okay, isn't that pretty? Yeah, love it. Okay, so there's an, another image. See this one? That's separate. So I'm gonna do the same thing and just kind of eke up onto the ink pad. And it, it did something different with this one. And yes, I'm using my finger a lot. I mean, if you don't like finger, put a glove on, use a rolled up piece of napkin, but I actually kind of mess this up. So there's still a little blue on there, but this is so much darker that it does not change the color. So I want a little bit of blue and I'm going to kind of just tap that to see if I can keep some of that blue on there. And I'm going to stamp that right there. Okay, so that is that. Then what I did, as you can see, there's even more brown. I took that nice little tip and added a little bit more to the center. I just wanted to bring that in. I know brown stems, it's, hey, it's the license of creativity, right? So, all right, that is, I'm gonna stick with it. My colors, I can do what I want with it. <laughs> so here I am sponging the edge with a sponge dauber and boho blue ink. And I will do the same thing with this. And remember, you have con full control over how much sponging. Don't do it like this, if, unless you like the really distressed look. But hold your sponge dauber at a hard angle if you don't want much, or at a slightly more 45 if you want a little bit more of the ink sponged on. So and always kind of wipe off your excess when you're inking, because if you ink too much, you can get blotchy. All right. I think that's it. All right, we will glue this to that. <laughs> that's funny, Joan. I haven't heard that one before. Huff like the big bad wolf. Yep. All right, so how this, before we're gonna texture this layer and finish up, this these are our in color jute twine. And I could use boho, but I want to bring a little bit more of the pebble path in. So one thing I've found, because people are a little, some people are dismayed that it's a little thick. Well, guess what? If you unspool it, you can get one, two, however many threads you want. I'm going to use two. I'm just going to kind of slide this back. And I'm going to just guesstimate and think that this is plenty. Now, I did not do that on this card. I used the full uh, twine. I should have, because I would have saved a lot of twine. But you can see it's still plenty thick, and it's still very pretty. So you can, it, this will go a long way if you separate some of those threads. Okay, so what I do is add adhesive. This is my little wiggy-waggy way of doing, um, let's see, this is going to be like this. We will do, no, I don't think I gave myself enough. Very close. I'm going to back this off a little bit and then cut, where's it at? Cut just a little bit more on this piece so I get another tail. Okay, so there's my little loop. Not quite as full or pretty as the other one. I'm gonna pull this a little bit more. Okay, then you need to add, unless you're going to use uh, mini glue dots or something, you have to kind of add something over that. So I'm gonna wait until I'm done with the card. I better, I shouldn't have put that on there. Okay, now we're going to start with our card base. So you're going to fold here, you're going to adhere this down, remember this is like a book. Okay, open that up and I'll be adding my inside stamped piece down here. Okay, so this will be like that. 
because that's where my easel goes. Now, I did stamp this flower ahead of time for some reason. And I'm using the, let's see, this is the Petal Park Builder Punch. I, I, I wanted to use the stamp, but I didn't want to fussy cut it. So I'm doing this. And you can see that it almost, even though it's a little bit of a distressed looking flower, it fills in very, very well. Okay, so now to, to use this as an easel, you see that that's, that has to be popped up. And I just didn't want a flat flower. It just looks so flat. So I went around and kind of just pinched all those pebbles and distressed it. So I'm kind of almost ruining it and breaking up the fibers. But it, it actually popped the petals up, surprisingly, nicely, like from the middle. So... Um, so yeah, it almost gave it a curl. Well, you can manipulate it, but it gave it a little bit of a curl. So then, and I didn't bring my minis over here, so I'm gonna use two of these edge pieces on the back. So here's one, here's the other. Now, why do I put it not in the center? Well, because I'm gonna have a gem and I don't want that gem to add even more thickness for mailing. So there's my flower. I'm using the in color dots and there's pebbled path in here. So these, just, and they're nice and flat. Okay, so there's our easel. So that's working. Okay. All right, so now let's bring in our next step is to texture these two pieces with the um, cut and emboss machine. Now I haven't, I don't share this often enough, but there is such a easy way. Some people just like, I don't know what plate to use on the 3Ds or on the regular. Well, in the catalog, we have this, uh, it's called a bait, Base plate? Oh, I should have looked it up. It's basically for 3D embossing. It's it's number four and it's sold separately, but that is all you need besides your platform. So this is my old platform. I don't know why I still use that, but it's what I have out. So all you need is your, now where did I put all my layers? Am I on top of them? No. I put them away somewhere so I wouldn't lose them. <laughs> oh goodness oh there they are okay so I want to be sure that they're running the same that's not quite right is it <laughs> now that I did that I can go around there we go if if you want them to look um, like they're matching so close that up always put the hinge first and make sure you're within your platform then put that number four on. It just makes it so easy. There is no guessing what layer, what plate to use um, for 3D or thick folders. It is just so wonderful to not have to, to guess um, what plate to use. Okay, so see that pretty embossing? Just lovely. So that's the exposed brick folder. All right, bringing back our card. Now, going to add my adhesive. This is Boho Blue on Misty Moonlight, if you're just jo joining me. Now, this is very important. You only add adhesive to this bottom corner. If you want it to be an ESO or, yeah, you just, you don't add adhesive everywhere. And then add this. We're just about done with this card. Then I have a really neat, well, I think it's a neat technique. Another card I think I made 28 of for the cruise that I'm excited to share with you. It's really one of my very favorites. Okay. Then we just add gems, which I didn't bring. Oh, that one doesn't have gems, but this one does. 
So just a few little gems up here in the corner. And that's the card. So aren't they pretty? So very different. Um, I don't know if I'd call them summery cards because they're so kind of subdued, but very lovely. And teaches you a little bit how to ink up stamps in two colors. Okay, lastly, I'm just going to show you the technique. I'm not going to make the whole card because I don't like the videos to get too long here. Um, but my very favorite cards. Okay, so this is what I'm pretty proud of. Um, you can see I use the same image in black this time, only I sponged and textured. Now, let me show you. This is my first card. Kind of, it's okay. I mean, it's pretty, but you add that texture to it. Isn't that a world of difference when you add the text? I don't know if you can see it very well. See if I can get it up closer. Depends on your screen. No, nope, maybe it's better like this. Anyway, depending on your screen, that uh, it's so much prettier with the texture. Okay, so I'm just going to grab um, and show you the sponging and the blending because I know I, I do it every so often. It's been a little while since I've done that. Oh, um, okay, yeah, we don't have a measure, measurements for this one. So I'm gonna do copper clay, that's what this is. Oh, and see this pretty paper? That is this one. So this is still that earthen elegance that I used on the other card. Okay, so tips. Have a clean work surface, first of all. Ink your sponge and start off your paper, work it in a little bit. And then in a circular motion, if you want it nice and light and smooth, I'm not using hardly any pressure. So then do it again and you're gonna have a mess. So make sure you're, you're prepared to have that, um, that work surface mess on your scrap paper. So look how smooth that is. And I'm just kind of going over, I'm gonna go, go about halfway. Now I like it when it's a lot darker at the base because then it shows more of a transition. So because I'm happy with that, I'm just going to always, 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 my biggest tip for you is to start off the paper and work your way on. And you do need to have a fully inked pad for this to work. So I struggled with the Coastal Cabana um, on some of my cards because it was not well inked. So I did just re-ink it and now I'm hoping I didn't get too much ink. So turn it over, clean, clean color, right? I don't want to work my Coastal Cabana into, that looks like it's, oh boy, very well inked. So we'll see how I do with this newly inked pad. Not too bad. I'm trying not to use much pressure and work my way slowly up. So the biggest hint, if you struggle with this, thank you. I love, love, love these colors. Copper with turquoise. Oh yeah. Um, so just don't do little by little. Little by little, don't rush and try and get the strong color that you may want really quickly. You do want to use less pressure and um, and you do end up tend to get heavy ink on the edge. That's okay, it's just the way it happens because you're going repeatedly over those edges. As you go, oh, I just got a smear. I'm try, probably trying to rush. But the nice thing about this is, is that when you texture it, it kind of, it's more forgiving. So remember that if you're looking for texture. Okay, a little bit more at the top here. I said lots of patience to get it, slowly add your color. Depending on what you want. But if you're going for a sky or a soft wash, that's what you wanna do is little by little. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so next we will take that large stamp and ink it up in black memento ink. And I did re-ink this too. Now, if you have a Stamparatus, Hi, thanks for joining me. If you're just joining in, we're finishing our last card 
today. Now, if you have a Stamparatus, I would definitely use a Stamparatus here because you can be assured you can get as black and as full as you want. So one thing I'm going to do here is huff because I want a really nice solid image. Don't rock, just press firmly. Very nice, okay. Now there's a second image there that I added and that is this little flower. Just fills in but a little bit. Now this is also very solid in a way, nice uh, deep color. Okay. All right, so then all you do after this is let this dry and run it through with that embossing folder that I seem to have, yeah, here we go, the exposed brick, and that's what you'll get. So isn't that beautiful? So I think that that brick makes all the difference in the world, adding that texture. I don't know how well that shows up on camera. Hopefully it does. But that's what I did. So this uh, greeting die cut is from the All That Dies. Again, the In Color Jute. And those gems are, I thought I brought them over here. Hmm. Oh yeah, these right here. So we have copper, boho, and lemon lolly in these gems. So that's it. Just you know, this will be on my blog in the next few weeks. So hopefully you follow me on my blog because I give a lot more detail, measurements and tips and whatnot on my blog. So yes, thank you. I'm glad it shows up. I appreciate that. Okay, so that those are the cards today. Hopefully you enjoyed them. This is what we did. And the stamp set we used was the Inked and Tiled. So... Yeah, fun, two couple fun folds. This one's an easel, if you haven't been here the whole time and just joining in. So, oh, by the way, these I just run under warm water or cool water, whatever, and a little bit of soap, a little bit of dish soap, and I just scrub them either together. First I rinse them, then I scrub them together, and sometimes I get my nails in there and try and get as much color out, and then I can reuse them with any color or a similar color. So I only have... I think six or six or eight of these. I don't have one for every color. I just clean them up. So anyway, that's today's color I, cards. I do want to mention I have quite a few left of these kits, um, the Fresh as a Daisy kit to go. So it is on my tutorial shop and you get, not the stamp set, <laughs> you get the Fresh as a Daisy designer paper, a share of that. You get a share of the Lemon Lolly ribbon, some of the gems, and these are the cards. And there are quite a few fun folds. Now you'll be cutting your new designer paper up yourself. Um, and this one is kind of neat where you have a divider between them. I die cut that for you. You just insert your designer paper between there. So most things are die cut for you. A little bit of fussy cutting of some of the flowers. Otherwise, I die cut and cut everything for you. So and this one is pretty cool. I like how um, you use, you cut this off of the card base and you bring it over here and use it on this card. So you're getting a two for for one die cut. So remember, you get the tutorial free. It's $28 with over 20, about $20 in product and plus shipping. So add on a second kit and you can get a second kit as well within the same shipping. So so yeah, it's a great deal, um, when you, especially if you add more than one kit. But there's a limited supply and they're all on my flowerbugshop.com. I have just a couple of the Country Inn and Sweets Country in designer paper uh, card cards as well. So be sure you check those out before they're gone um, because I don't make more. Once they're gone, they're done. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it and have a great week. And now I will not be back live on my Facebook page next Tuesday. I will be back the day after Memorial Day though. So two weeks from now is when I'll be back. We are going on the Stampin' Up! trip to Norway. So excited we leave in two days. All right. So thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. And have a wonderful week. And uh, enjoy summer. Hopefully it's summer where you are.
It's coming here. We're getting there. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye-bye.